Hey everybody, um, today I just want to talk a little bit about um, triggers in DACMX, how you can use them, what the different types of triggers do, um, and where you can find them. So um, just to start off, I have one of the DACMX examples. This is just the voltage continuous input VI. So if you're just wanting to set up some simple, hey, I want to make sure I'm reading data, this is a great starting place if you're working with voltages and then you can always you know take this do a save as and go and modify it to match your needs um, but yeah um, this I think is a good starting place to show different triggers and how they work and how you can leverage them um, so you can see right here on the main screen we've got a whole bunch of different trigger options so we've got no trigger um, which basically just when I run this VI the code's just going to set up the DAC task and start reading data. I can do things like a digital start, digital pause, digital reference, um, analog start, analog pause, analog reference, and time start. And I'm going to talk about what all of these uh, different things are. Um, so uh, you can see here in this example, we've got kind of this, uh, our trigger selection and then we've got this case structure that's basically specifying the different types of triggers. So to find the uh, trigger function, um, we're just going to go to measurement IO and NI DACMX. Um, and it's one of these just top functions right here. We've got our DACMX trigger. So we're always going to be tying that into our DAC task. If you look, we are here creating the channels, specifying timing, configuring logging which is you know optional um, and then we are configuring the trigger before we start the task so that's going to be typical workflow for using DACMX trigger is we're going to include that kind of in our startup code of our DAC task is where we're going to define the trigger um, so this DACMX trigger function is polymorphic so you can see there's kind of a drop down list here and I can look at different types of triggers that I can use so we have um, start triggers, we have reference triggers, and then if you notice as well on this UI, there are also these pause triggers, um, which actually don't use this DACMX trigger function. If you notice, if you look in these uh, pause, we're actually using properties to define these pause triggers instead of this function. Um, but yeah, um, so let's talk about what these different triggers are and what they do um, and how to know which one to use for your application. So a start trigger is a trigger that basically you can configure your task, um, you can then run said task, but the task isn't actually going to begin until the trigger condition is met. So regardless of whether this is like a finite samples or continuous samples, it's going to wait until some condition is met. So um, we have options of both digital and analog, and there's some other, you know, kind of beyond that, right? So for example, for a digital edge, we're able to specify a certain digital line. So we've got this source option. Um, I can specify which digital line I want to be the digital edge that'll trigger that. And then um, I can also specify the edge type. So whether it's a rising edge or falling edge. So that way, if I had set to a rising edge, for example, um, and let's just say, um, yeah, let's say it's on one of these PFI lines on this uh, CDAC module. Um, so now, basically, if I had inserted this in place of this case structure here, um, and I run my start task, basically my code's going to halt execution until this line sees a rising digital edge, and which point it will then begin the task and start reading data. Um, same thing works, uh, you know, I can use digital pattern. So again, works similarly. I'm able to specify a source and then I'm able to specify the actual pattern. Um, they, I haven't really used that one much, mostly just digital edge. Um, analog works very much the same, where I'm able to specify basically a analog source, and then the slope, so again, are we rising or are we falling? 
and also the analog level. So let's say I don't want to start reading data until voltage gets above, let's say, 5 volts, right? And I want to, so maybe it's sitting around zero, and I don't actually want to start reading data until that voltage gets above 5 volts. Well, I would set it to rising and set it to 5. And then once that analog line sees that rising edge coming above 5, the task begins. We start seeing data. Boom. Same thing works with falling, et cetera. And there's other options as well for analog. So you can do a multi-edge, you can do window. Um, there is also this time one, which is kind of cool, um, where you're actually able to specify basically a start time. So you're using a timestamp, so like a date and time at which the task is supposed to begin. Um, so if I wanted to, I could say, hey, you know, I just want to be able to start this task, but I don't actually want to start reading data until, you know, 1 p.m. today. Well, boom, I can just set 1 p.m. I don't have to, you know, build any logic in my code. It will basically just start at a certain time. So you can use that to basically force things to happen at specific times. Your task begins at that specific time. So that's a start trigger or a start time trigger. Um, we also have reference triggers. So you still have, you know, the same options minus the time one. Um, reference triggers work just a little bit differently though. So I can still select a digital edge and I still can specify my source and the edge type, so rising or falling, but I now have one other input down here. I have this pre-trigger samples per channel. Um, so uh, these reference triggers work just a little bit differently where, um, and they actually, if you look uh, here, so if I go like digital reference, you'll notice it's not supported in continuous sample timing. So. Um, this is more so for your finite samples type. This is going to work a lot more like your oscilloscope trigger, where you basically set an oscilloscope trigger level and conditions, and once that condition's met, you get a dump of data. And you can configure data pre-trigger, post-trigger, stuff like that. So um, this, this works more like that, where we're basically just going to get a data dump. So I can specify here, um, my pre-trigger samples. So pre-trigger samples per channel. So how much data before the trigger do I want? Um, so that way, you know, it's going to be analyzing, looking for that trigger condition to be met, but I'm not going to just see from the time the trigger was triggered on, I'm actually able to see data before that as well. So um, yeah, working more like an oscilloscope trigger would work. And I can configure the same thing for you know, analog edge, etc. cetera. Um, I do want to highlight, if you turn on the context help by pressing control H, um, the help here actually defines um, what each type of trigger does. So if you're not sure, hey, wh what does a reference trigger do again? This actually gives you a good definition. And as I go to different types, so I go to digital edge, you can see that it changes to define what a digital edge trigger is. If I go to analog edge, analog window um, to time, you know, I'm able to see definitions specific to those. So um, yeah, so that's uh, reference triggers. And then um, obviously there is one other type of trigger um, that's not in that DACMX trigger function. And those are going to be your pause triggers. So we've got our digital pause and we've got analog pause. So the idea behind these is rather than doing nothing until the trigger is met and the trigger condition is met and then getting data, um, this is going to allow the task to be running, but the trigger will actually pause the task from executing. So for example, with a digital pause, our task is able to read data, read data, read data, but it's going to pause the task when a condition is met. So we can specify a certain digital line um, and then we can specify whether we want to pause when high or low. So if we want to know, hey, when this line's high, that means stop reading data, I can set up that digital line to work just like that, and it's going to work just great. Um, same thing works with analog pause. I just need to specify my analog line, and I can specify above or below, and then I just set a voltage threshold and say, hey, you know, anytime we're below 5 volts, don't read data. And it's basically going to pause my task for me. So 
Really simple to set up. Just remember that those ones aren't really in the DACMX timing or the DACMX trigger, sorry. You'll just want to use property nodes. Um, so you'll drop down this DACMX trigger. Um, and then same thing for like a um, digital pause works the same. And if you have questions, just look up these examples. They're super easy to pull up and you can just look at how they configured that. Um, but yeah, those are kind of the different types of triggers in um, DACMX. So you've got your start trigger, which basically waits on a condition before starting the task. You've got a reference trigger, which basically waits on a condition and then gets you a finite amount of data before and after the trigger. And then you've got um, pause triggers, which basically pause your data acquisition until some conditions met. So those are your different options for DACMX uh, triggers. Um, again, I highly recommend if you're unsure of what to, or of how they work and whatnot, just open up an example. They're they're really good. They're really well put together, and they kind of explain things to you. And then also, again, I highly recommend the context help as well. You know, I can mouse over this and I can, can see what an analog edge start trigger does. So um, really cool. So that's gonna be DACMX triggering in LabVIEW. Thanks for watching. Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.